I've long been an advocate of playing games on the iPad. I've actually had some really good experiences on there. And while I don't think it can replace a dedicated console at all, I do think if you have one, giving gaming a go on it is certainly worth it. However, there is one problem. There's no de facto game controller for the iPad or any of Apple's devices. And most games seem to tread a fine line between going all in on touch controls and also accommodating controller input. But today I wanted to test out the most popular gaming controllers for the iPad and to give you a solid recommendation on which one you should go for. So let's get right into it. Okay, first up is our cheapest option. This is the light controller from 8BitDo. And straight up, I think the design and color options on these little controllers are excellent. They're made to match the Nintendo Switch light colors and they do a very great job at that. There's quite a lot going for this controller. There's a USB-C slot with a built-in battery that lasts a good amount of time. The buttons all feel good and clicky and you're getting dual shoulder buttons, which is cool on a controller this size. And for a final party trick, this does connect to a Nintendo Switch 2, which is really cool. For 2D games, this controller is really great. The D-pad fits right under your thumb, the ABXY buttons are all easy to access and push, and the shoulder buttons feel good, even if they are a little small. However, and you may have guessed this by simply looking at it, when you jump to any 3D game, this controller pretty much falls apart. The dual D-pad layout just doesn't work well for bigger titles where you need better control over the camera or you need to navigate open worlds. You can get by on it, but it just feels awful to use and you won't be competitive using one of these if that's important to you. Oh, and there's no rumble support either. Although that's not really a huge deal on anything Apple right now. Overall, I'm going to give this controller a 2.5 out of 5. If you know you're playing simple games and want something that's excellent in a portability sense, then you'll be fine with this. But if you're planning on any 3D titles, this ain't it. Let's move over to another controller from 8BitDo. This is the SN30 Pro, which I've had for a good while now. And to be really honest and open with you all, this has kind of been my go-to controller for iPad pretty much since I've had it. Just from looking at it, you can tell this is inspired by the Super Nintendo controller from 1991, and it feels pretty much bang on the same too. However, you are getting two analog sticks here, double shoulder buttons, rumble support, and a built-in battery with USB-C charging. So it's fair to say this is very much a modern reinterpretation of it. I like this controller a lot. It's a lot more comfy than the light controller. The analog sticks feel nice and tight and they're clickable too. The face buttons are all tactile and it still retains its compact size, which makes it perfect for carrying around with you. This also works on Switch, Mac and Windows too, which makes it just really versatile. On the surface, this controller feels like an ideal solution for the iPad, but, and this is quite a big but, it's actually not that comfortable for longer play sessions. This is also true of the light controller, but the lack of a distinct grip leaves your bottom two fingers hanging off all the time. And for me at least, after about an hour of play, you can really feel it. That aside, this is a fantastic controller for the iPad. Everything seems to translate well onto it. And there's plenty of buttons to control every game I've tried. Overall, I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of five. It's a great all around controller, but the comfort levels and slightly cramped shoulder buttons bring it down. 8 do do make a version with grips, which I think is possibly a better solution if you're playing for longer sessions. Let's move on to a classic now with the Xbox One controller. You probably don't need me to tell you that this controller is comfortable with great button layouts and all of that sort of stuff, so I won't. But I do actually think the Xbox controller is the one most companies have in mind when bringing controller support to the iPad. You can see a visual representation of it in most games in the settings menu, which kind of shows where they're at. And as a testament to that, most game controls feel just right on here. Everything translates really nicely and there's no strange button bindings like there are on smaller controllers. Another benefit of the Xbox controller is you're getting a pretty universal device too. You can use this on your PC, Mac, even a switch with an adapter, and not to mention the amount of third party tools and gadgets that connect to it, like VR and stuff, just make it a useful tool to have around. Its usability speaks to that too. This controller does a fantastic job on the iPad for all the games I've tried. And if you're planning on doing some Xbox Cloud Gaming, Steam Link, GeForce Now, or even Google Stadia, then this controller is going to be perfect for that too. It's difficult to have anything too bad to say about this controller. 
However, it is quite large, so it's not the best for portability and there is no rechargeable battery. You're going to have to go after market if you want that here or just pile in some double A's every now and then. So it's not perfect by any means. Overall, I'm going to give the Xbox controller a 4.5 out of five. It's an all round great performer and it's only let down by its lack of an internal battery. Next up is two controllers I'm throwing together because despite them being from different generations, they perform so similarly on iPadOS that they can basically go together. It's the PS4 and the PS5 controllers. Again, you don't need me to tell you about the comfort because these are both excellent in the hand and feel very high quality, especially the DualSense for PS5. The only thing of note on the PS4 controller is it uses micro USB to charge, which is a shame, but it isn't a deal breaker, especially considering its age. Another pain point I think for both of these controllers is the internal battery doesn't last as long as any of the others on this list, but that's not to say it's bad because it's not, it's just a little less than the others. For actually gaming on the iPad though, these are both excellent options. Most buttons translate well onto these controllers, but what I will say, and understandably so, is both of these controllers feel a little underutilized for what they are. The touchpad just turns into a really big button, and in the case of the PS5's DualSense controller, the upgraded vibration motors just aren't used at all, as aren't the gyro sensors. For me, both of these controllers are getting a four out of five. They're both excellent options. However, I think unless you already have a PS5, I don't think you should shell out for the DualSense because you really don't need this for an iPad. Finally, let's talk about the Nimbus Plus from SteelSeries, which is officially licensed by Apple as a controller for the iPad, iPhone, and Apple TV. And look, I've got to be honest, I don't like this controller at all. The whole thing feels very cheap, the buttons have a nasty click to them and they wobble in place, the analog sticks feel very plasticky with little grip, and the D-pad is possibly the worst offender, it's got a horrible click and clack to it and it rattles in position. If you told me this controller was £15, I would probably believe you because that's how it feels, and it shouldn't. I paid £60 for this controller and I was expecting a much better experience than this. There's some other big red flags too. This thing charges by lightning cable, which while I kind of understand, I think it's a horrible decision. This really should be USB-C and there's no vibration motor in here either, which feels like a bit of an oversight. I know vibration support is limited at best, but if developers are planning on bringing that over, well, you're already going to miss out with this controller. On the flip side of that though, it's unlikely you'll spend much time charging this controller because the battery life is insane. Seriously, I've charged this controller once since I've owned it and there's no sense of it running low soon. It boasts 50 hours of playtime and so far, I'm confident it will push that much easily. I guess not having a rumble feature in here also probably helps with this. In other good areas, the connection to iPadOS was flawless. This was the easiest to pair and connect by a long shot. And it's comfortable too. In fact, it might be the most comfortable of all the controllers I've tried and credit where it's due, the shoulder buttons are also nice, but yikes. Quality wise, this one feels way off the mark of where a 60 pound controller should be. Generally speaking though, this is a good controller for the iPad. Everything feels just about right, and I put that mainly down to it mimicking the Xbox controller. It also comes with a phone clip so you can attach your iPhone to it, which is cool, but anytime you do end up using this controller, you'll be reminded of how cheap and tacky it does feel. They really dropped the board on quality here, and I'll be happy to never really use this one again. I'm going to give this controller a 2.5 out of five. There's no way a 60 pound controller should feel this cheap. But to its merit, the battery life is fantastic, it pairs seamlessly, and it is possibly one of the more comfortable controllers to use. Taking all of those controllers into account, the best one is probably one you already own. If you have an Xbox, PS4, or PS5, then just use one of those controllers because they're really excellent. However, if you're looking for the de facto best controller for the iPad and iOS in general, then I'm going to suggest the Xbox One pad is the way to go. Not only is this a great controller, but it certainly feels like the most supported one for all the games out there. However, if you are looking for something that's a lot more compact, I still really recommend the SN30 Pro from 8-Bit Do. That's a very close secondary recommendation from me. Just don't expect it to stay really comfortable for those longer play sessions. All of this testing does make me think that there's space for Apple to put out a dedicated controller for their devices. If they coupled it with the easy pairing of the AirPods, then it could become another accessory that's a clear go-to for iPad and iPhone. They could even build in a headphone port for headsets, which would be a really awesome feature. Anyway, that pretty much rounds up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, pop a like, that would be massive, and I will see you all in the next one.